Do you ever feel shortchanged by your primary mass resources? Well, here on Resource Review, we'll be looking at three that might give you good value for money. They are a programmable floor robot, yes! a step and count mat. Have you thought of the yeah. calculation? Is it going to give you maximum points? And a set of large coins of the realm. Will these resources reign supreme? Well, to find out, keep watching Resource Review. Recommending today's resources is Isaac Anoum. Isaac is a freelance primary maths advisor, but many know him better as Mr. Numbervator. On the panel today, we have Fran Bradshaw. Fran is a primary advisor for mathematics for Hertfordshire. And we also have Judy Sayers. Judy is senior lecturer in mathematics education at the University of Northampton. Great to have you all on the show today. Isaac, you've chosen three resources for us to look at today. First of all, though, I wanted to ask you, all of them have been around for a few years. Weren't you tempted to suggest something new? I think we need to remember that maths and the teaching of maths is, is timeless. And I think some of the resources that were around some time ago are still relevant and can still be adapted by the teacher to actually suit the class that he or her is teaching. OK, well, your first resource is the Valiant Roma, this thing on the table. Yep. Can you explain it to us and why you like it? The Roma is a programmable toy and it's mainly used in ICT, mainly used in ICT lesson. Mm -hmm. And when you see it working, I think you're going to understand the reason why it's so invaluable because it's just, it's just so exciting. Okay, okay so I've turned it on. Yeah. I'm going to place it on the floor here. And when you first turn the Roma on, it moves in a set programmable way. And what the children do is that they watch they watch it moving yep. and then they talk about where it's going, what direction, how it turns. And with the Roma, it moves in units. And one unit is the Roma's body length, which Sing, is... It sings as well. It also plays music as well. And, and it actually moves in a 30 centimetre unit each time. And that in itself is a great way of actually promoting estimation, for example. Well, we went along to Engain Primary School in the London Borough of Havering, where Stephanie Barber let the robot roam wild in her Year 2 class. Today we were using the Valiant Roma to help with our math skills of uh, estimating distance. Uh, we were working with the children to remind them of the, the buttons they were using on the Roma, using the turning buttons um, and the 90 degrees button to turn right angles. The children could then press go, which would make the Roma move, or they could program the next piece of movement and then press go after the whole of their journey is planned. Oh, brilliant, look at that. We then moved into our maths groups and they worked with children of their own ability so that they could work together as a group. There was a Skittles activity which needed the children to aim for high numbers using some of their math skills. Uh, one activity was steering the Roma around cones. There was a postman activity where the children were purely going forwards and backwards and estimating the diff distance. I think sometimes the children would work better with the Romas if they could use a different method of turning the Roma, not just with degrees and uh, units, but also with words. The batteries can be a bit of a problem because they do run down quite quickly. Sometimes we find them difficult on carpeted areas as well. They work a lot better on the hall. I think it works very well for the children. They really enjoy using it. It makes maths a lot more practical for them. They enjoyed using it for ICT as well. And it is very simple, especially for the year two children. Well, Isaac, we saw the Roma going down pretty well in the mm. classroom there. Mm. 
It seems quite flexible. I mean, how best do you think it's used in the classroom? I've used it, the best way I've used it is with the whole class. And when you've got the whole class sitting around the Roma, you can play so many games. Like, I want to get the Roma to go from the teacher to a child opposite, for example. How much shall I program the Roma to move from me to the child? To buy one with a few batteries, I mean, you're sure. looking almost £150. Yeah. Um, so if you wanted a several for your class, it's quite an investment. As an investment, I think you can... I, I think, I think any any one school can maybe buy, can purchase maybe five, because at any one time it's unlikely that more classes will go, are going to want the Roma to be used at the, at the same time. OK, well, let's see what our panel think. Fran. Well, Isaac, a set of five is a huge investment. Uh, my view is that for the amount of time it's used, I've seen it used, just one used for whole class teaching, and the teacher didn't have your motivational skills. And my view was that it worked best on the clip with one per small group. Children like to be actively involved in it and to be able to get their hands on and program it. Well, let's bring Judy in. What are your thoughts? Again, I think it's the cost. Um, the new robots coming on the market now take AA batteries mm -hmm. rechargeable. These have got those huge cells. They're heavy, cumbersome, and as we heard from the teacher, they do run out quite quickly when you least hope them to. Um, but Having said that, um, I've had some excellent lessons mm. using this. Um, you can also program it to um, uh, do other things. You can attach helicopters and all sorts yeah. of things to it. So I mean, it sounds like there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it, but I, I mean, just wish they'd update it. What do you think, Isaac? I mean, does it need an update, or is it still good as it stands? No, I think it's still good as it stands. I think <laughs> what needs to be happening, I think, I think we, need to, we need to be using it a lot more in the classroom, in a lot more schools, for example, OK? And teachers can see the value of having a large eye-catching sort of tactile resource. And is it robust enough? Yes, oh, definitely. Def I've, I've seen it being dropped. OK. <laughs> not, on, not on purpose. Right, right. <laughs> I've, I've seen it being dropped and it, it, it carries on working. OK, well, I'm afraid we've got to move on now to Isaac's second choice of resource. And we've got it here on the table. It's folded up at the moment, but this is a 1 to 25 step and count mat. Right, yeah. um, explain it to us. The beanbags come with it, is yes, that right? they do. They do indeed. The step and count mat is um, a lovely resource to promote, to challenge and to extend children's understanding of number at the most easy basic stage, for example. It excites children, it makes them want to learn. OK, well, can you count on this resource working for you in the classroom? We visited Cardwell Primary School in South East London to see Jo Sarker using it with her Year 2 class. Excellent, so we all know which team we're on. OK. The resource we used this morning was a big number mat that you can lay on the floor and with that came um, eight beanbags. What we did was we split the class into mixed ability groups. I called out a target number from the mat and the children um, as a team thought of a, an appropriate calculation that would match the answer on the mat. Have you thought of the calculation? Is it going to give you maximum points? I'll put an element of fun and um, a challenge in the game, whereby I said that you would get higher points if you used a division or a multiplication calculation in your answer. If you make a division calculation, you're going to score a higher point. You're going to score five points. I think it's a very visual um, tool that you can use to both enhance teaching and learning. It's certainly uh, a fun resource for the children to use. It keeps them engaged and motivated. And uh, even those who find it really hard to do calculations uh, in the head were joining in and participating. OK, go and put your beanbags on the mat. I'd say that you could probably use it for both key stage one and two from, from as young as nursery children and then as you go higher up in the school you could do various uh, problem solving activities. Well, Isaac, interestingly there, the teacher suggested it could be used across Key Stage 1 and 2. Mm -hmm.
Who do you think it's really aimed at? I've used it in both key stages. I think it's particularly invaluable lower down the school, so we're looking at key stage one, because it's a good resource to reinforce number understanding, number recognition. And then further up the school, for example, in key stage two, if we're looking at, let's say, a year five classroom, yeah. you can get the year five pupils to actually make questions that give one of these numbers as an answer, okay. and that's linking numeracy and literacy together as well. Well, Judy, what are your thoughts on this mat? I wouldn't buy it. I really? think it's really expensive, 34, over £34 pounds for bean bags. I've got bean bags in my pea cupboard. Uh, numbers on a mat. I like the idea. And now, having, if I was a teacher watching this program, I think, oh, that's a good idea. How can I, how can I um, think of other ways of using this idea? Well, Fran, you seem to be nodding. What are your thoughts on this resource? This and, and the, the girl on the, te the teacher on the television alluded to it is a fantastic problem solving resource, an open ended resource where children are having fun and they don't realise they're mm. learning. And children often say to me they learn better by listening to each other and also by doing. They wish they could do more and the teacher talk less. And this is a classic opportunity of be it, do it, touch it, feel it. Mm -hmm. you know, right. Learning through having fun, I think, is great. Well, Fran clearly is a big fan. Not sure about Judy. Like the idea. The idea well, okay, itself. That's fine. Okay, well now let's move on to Isaac's third choice of resource, which you can see here displayed on the table. It's a set of big money, mm. the massive money coins. Isaac, it's something very simple. I mean, w what is this resource all about? It's about teaching children how to understand money in a different way now, okay? Because obviously in the primary classroom when I was, when I was younger, we had a, a tray full of little coins that often got lost, for example. With this, I think it's, it's large enough to be, to be respected. Now, um, in one set, you just get one coin of each. Yeah. Is that a bit of a limitation? If you buy two or three sets within the school, yeah. then you can actually use another set from another classroom to actually support and reinforce and reinforce the learning. OK. Judy, Fran, isn't this something you could just make yourself? Again, no, I think it's, it's the kind of resource that's perfect for whole class teaching. You wouldn't want to make it yourself because of certainly the colours, the cutting out. The Making it realistic. Yeah. But I do, I do think every class would need more than one set because mm. You know, I would be looking at this in terms of equivalence, how many pennies make 5p. Right. And I would want five large one piece to do the demonstration. For whole class teaching, I think there's nothing better than this. Mm, yeah. Do I you? Know, I know. Well, I like money. Don't we all? Big money. <laughs> um, yes, I agree with Fran. Teaching money is like time. It's problematic. Children mm. do not understand. They'll have handfuls of money in the role play area, for instance, and expect change. They don't know the value. Mm, they don't understand sure. the value. And it takes a long time for some children to so. really develop that skill of, of, of recognising value. OK, well, I'm afraid we're cashing up now because that's all we've got time for. But just to recap, the three resources that we looked at were the Valiant Roma from NES Arnold, the 1 to 25 Step and Count mat with bean bags, available from GLS Educational Supplies Limited, and finally, Massive Money Coins, again available from GLS Educational Supplies Limited. For more information about all of the resources we've discussed today, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. Big thank you to our panel, to Isaac, to Fran and to Judy. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.